Houston going on a radio promotional tour with yep. Micah Stampley. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a lot of work, man. Yeah, it's been quite a long journey. Uh, <laughs> a we long started day. off at 5 a.m. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we hit the Yolanda Adams morning show. Micah Stampley. Now listen, for my endorsement, brother, I need wings and waffles. Right. Wings and waffles. From the breakfast club. Right. Yeah. <laughs> from the breakfast club. That's where we need to go. He's he said for my endorsement. That's yeah, for my endorsement. For me to endorse this CD. You know what I'm saying? I need wings, wings and, waffles and waffles. From the breakfast club. Wings and waffles. A side of grits. And a banana from Fiesta. <laughs> <laughs> so now, at the Yolanda Adams Morning Show, get ready to hook up with them. See what they what they saying about this new album. We're here on the Yolanda Adams Morning Show with Marcus D. A V U and me. On our way to the next stop. Had a great time on the Yolanda Adams Morning Show. Phenomenal time. The Larrys, you know they crazy. They all crazy. Especially Marcus. Headed to the James Fortune Show. Y'all want to come along? Follow us. It's the James Fortune Show, and family, as promised, I am joined in studio by my boy, my brother, the incredible, anointed Micah Stampley. What's up, man? Too many accolades, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to support anointed music like yeah. this. It's life-changing, and it's what you need in your life. And Micah, we appreciate you, your ministry, man, everything that you're doing for the kingdom. Thank you, uh, Just traveling all over the world. Thank you for making time to come by the James Fortune Show. We are truly grateful for that, and we're going to make sure we continue to support and push this brand new project, yeah, Love Never Fails. Thank right you. after that, we hit uh, Pastor Ivy Hilliard's church. Yeah, yeah, his television broadcast. And um, Max Life. Max Life. Y'all don't twerk. No, don't twerk. Well, you know, no, twerking may be a little biblical. We want to say something out there, but twerking may be a little biblical. You may can find twerking Come in the, on. You may can find twerking in the Song of Solomon. Right. Yeah. <laughs> See? So, See? It's something very powerful that happens when you combine obedience with the expressions of worship. I sing, I dance, I play the instrument, instruments as expressions of my worship, but it's not necessarily worship itself, but obedience to the word of God is true worship. Wow. As you guys know, he has a hit project out, just hit stores, Man. and he's got a new single out right now. Our God. Our God. And then project, what is the name of the project? Love Never Fails. Love Never Fails. Now, what I want to know is where that title come from? I mean, a lot of the songs that we had, uh, you start listening to this stuff, the content started kind of talking about the love of Christ, uh, his, the sacrifice he made for us, uh, his mercy, his grace, you know, things like that. Um, and um, it just felt natural, you know, my wife and I were talking about it. And she said, well, what do you think about this? And I said, no, let's do it this way. Yeah, and, uh, and and love never fails, prevailed. And uh, it's uh, probably my best work to date. Give me a scripture reference that that title represents in the Bible, biblically. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting, everlasting life. life. Amen. Here we're going to take a real quick clip of um, Michael Stampley performing at Max Life. We'll Micah Stampley, man, powerful, powerful singing, 
on stage. You just belted it out on, on uh, Max Life. I think they're actually distributed on the Impact yeah. Network, so everybody yep. on the Impact Network is yep. blessed. But uh, powerful, man. Now, let's take it back to the past a little bit, just a couple of yeah, minutes. Just, just not, not too far yeah, back. Yeah. Just a little bit. Let's go back to the holiness. And <laughs> uh, I saw a clip of uh, you and Donnie McClurkin on TBN. Oh. Okay, and Donnie was talking about how people compare you to Donnie McClurkin, <laughs> challenging you to a little duel there, but he did it in a little nonchalant way, you know what I'm saying? He was like, yeah, he's like, you sing higher to me. And, you, and as you know out there is you always compliment your competitors, you know, just to make it seem like if you don't do as good, then you still have something that to fall Stop, back on. Man. Now, Donnie, I'm not getting on you, Donnie, just a little bit. But, uh, but you guys got up there and sang it. And I mean, I can see how people compare y'all, but mm -hmm. y'all definitely have y'all's own unique sounds where I can tell you apart. Mm -hmm. But you also can see the uh, just the gift that both of you guys mm -hmm. have and the range that you guys mm -hmm. both are able to emulate on, on stage. Yeah, I, you know, I think that the comparison only comes when we both singing in our higher registers. Mm -hmm. You know, our tones are similar when we are singing high. But mm -hmm. other than that, we sound absolutely nothing alike. Of course, the Clark sisters, you know, um, I've, I've been influenced by uh, um, not just gospel artists, but pop artists, you know, mm -hmm. um, Cindy Lauper, remember? I see mm -hmm. your true color shining through, you know, stuff like that. Um, uh, who hasn't been influenced by Michael Jackson? Mm -hmm. You know, when I was young, you know, I grew up in the Church of God in Christ, so anything outside of gospel music was a sin. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, basically. <laughs> so we were the only way I was able to listen to music that wasn't gospel music was when I was on my bus on the way to school, right. and the bus driver was playing the radio, <laughs> you know, playing the radio, and I hear all of this music and stuff like that. And uh, but um, you know, War Cry and all those different sounds that you hear with the screaming guitars. That's my love for CCM music, classical music, uh, pop, um, country music. I absolutely love country music. I write country music. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, you know what? As a matter of fact, I have a theme song for the rodeo. Really? What is that? Yeah. Back in my bag, I'm getting ready to go. Put on my boots, grab my hat, running out the door. <laughs> Picking up my date, I don't want to be late. She's the kind of girl that don't like to wait. Hitting the road, head south to the rodeo. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Texas Road Rodeo, right. here he comes, here he comes. Now he's in Texas. Probably. It's copyrighted, don't trip. <laughs> hey, don't even, don't even write. <laughs> Molly Music, of course. Oh, yeah. Um, had an opportunity to do a concert with him. He was in my, my home in Ghana, mm -hmm. West Africa, and um, just uh, maybe like a, a few months ago, mm -hmm. and had a chance to bring him um, to my home, our palace, and you know, just kind of just hang out a little bit. And uh, I here, got I gotta ask you, how do you feel about him going secular now? Did you hear about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. He mm -hmm. and I uh, talked about some things um, on the way to Ghana, mm -hmm. and. Um, the thing about Molly, and I understand, you know, what he's saying, but mm -hmm. he will always be, it's too much ministry in him mm -hmm. for it to, I mean, to just drop all of this. This is a call on his life. And I don't personally, this is me, and this is not, you know, anything that he, right. uh, you know, he and I have, um, I, I haven't shared this with him, of course, but mm -hmm. I don't believe that, um, he'll just completely let this go because he's a minister. Mm -hmm. That's who God, you know, that's a part of who he is. But he said that he felt that there was a way, a limit to how far you could go in gospel. That was his quote. There's a limit to that, and it's an unspoken cap, you know, mm -hmm. that he said that, 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 that people don't talk about mm -hmm. that you can reach in gospel. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't particularly agree with that, but I know artists who do, and I know there's artists who don't. Do you think there's a cap in gospel, or do you think that God can enlarge any of our tears, and we can be like Marvin Sapps, where I never would have made it, and exactly. go 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 far ways, you know? Exactly, and and I, I agree with with what you just mm -hmm. said. I do not agree that, um, and I didn't read the statement. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there are a lot of people. My wife, in particular, read it, and she mm -hmm. was really, you know, she was really thrown off by it. But. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I kind of understand what he's saying because compare, comparing um, um, gospel artists and, and ourselves, you know, um, how much 
music we sell and compare it to secular artists, there's, there's no comparison. And if that's what he's referencing to, then I can understand what he means by that. But I don't think that there is a cap or a limitation in our genre. I believe that there is, you will always have um, one type of uh, uh, entertainment media or uh, outlet that will do better than the other, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's just, you have banks. One bank will, will be you know, um, wealthier than the next. Or, mm -hmm. you know, one hotel franchise will, you know, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that there's a cap mm -hmm. on the growth of that particular. I agree. Yeah. You know, and so I, I, um, I, my prayer is that um, there is an understanding and clarity about um, um, our growth in gospel music industry and of course boy we represent maybe two or three percent of the entire entertainment world mm -hmm. you know so if you look at those factors then you can kind of understand where he's coming where from, he's from coming a, yeah. from yeah and uh, but I, you know man um, th there are things that we can do and there are places that God can take you um, when you're faithful Mm -hmm. And when you're living a life that's pleasing to his sight, I'm a living witness of that, you know, and um, I'm just grateful for God's hand and mercy on my life. It, it was the music and it was the worship in my heart and in my spirit that caused the king of kings to give me a kingdom, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and so that's that's the place I come from. Now gospel is the lines are blurring a lot from from gospel to you know to the secular world we have gospel artists getting into reality TV um, what is your opinion on just gospel artists and preachers getting into reality TV? You know um, I don't necessarily disagree with the gospel community um, getting involved in reality TV however um, I think that we need to be careful as ministers of the gospel uh, with what we're putting out in public. It's my job, I'm a licensed minister mm -hmm. and I'm also a, a, a music minister, so mm -hmm. it's not my job to expose my imperfections, mm -hmm. but it's my job to expose his perfection. Mm -hmm. And when you look at that, you know, from that angle, then there are certain things that you won't do Mm -hmm. And there are things that you won't say. And you know, another thing is, mm -hmm. I think that we begin, and I, of course, we're not pinpointing mm -hmm. a specific show or anything like that. But just people in general, especially in the in the church, and humility is key. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Bible, the Word of God, is true. A mm -hmm. haughty heart comes before the fall. Right, right. And I'm not going to put myself out there puffed up and arrogant and prideful, um, carrying mm -hmm. the spirit of Lucifer, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and end up falling flat on my face. Mm -hmm. Because that, it happens every single time. You see it in the pulpit, mm -hmm. you see it in artists, you see scandals, and you see all sorts of things that happen when people begin to carry and live with the spirit of pride mm -hmm. and arrogance. A haughty heart comes before the fall. Mm -hmm. I'm back really digging back into my acting. I've done House of Pain, Necessary Roughness, um, Anchorman Part Two with Will Ferrell and Megan Good. Um, so I've done quite a bit, you know, lately. And um, so it's been great. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that you are actually uh, acting, you know, and you have uh, more plans, more plans for that in, in, in the near future. So keep on doing what you're doing, brother. God's you, got man. his hand on you. It. Amen. God's got his hand. Guys, you want to check out Micah Stampley, the new CD. Love never fails. You can check me out on Twitter, at Micah Stampley. My Facebook Facebook page, same handle. And my website is micahstampley.org. That's M-I-C-A-H-S-T-A-M-P-L-E-Y dot O-R-G.